Hello and welcome to day 278 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now and share this broadcast with your friends, family and loved ones. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles today. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Arelaba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude for the opportunity to read and meditate on your word. We ask for your presence to fill us as we embark on this journey through the scriptures on this 278th day of our Bible journey. Open our minds and our hearts to receive divine revelation, wisdom, and understanding. Lord, as we read, we pray that your word will be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Let your truth transform us, guiding us in righteousness and drawing us closer to you. May your spirit illuminate the passages, allowing us to see your purpose and your plan for our lives. Father, help us to apply what we learn today, strengthening our faith and deepening our relationship with you. We ask for your grace to walk in obedience and for your peace to guard our hearts. Thank you for the gift of your word and the power it holds to change lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 278, October 5th, 2024. 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, Jeremiah 9, 17 to 26. Jeremiah 10 and Jeremiah 11, 1 to 17. New Testament, Colossians 1, 24 to 29 and Colossians 2, 1 to 5. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 117, verse 1 to 2. Old Testament, NIV version, Jeremiah 9, 17 to 26. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Consider now, call for the wailing women to come. Send for the most skillful of them. Let them come quickly and wail over us till our eyes overflow with tears and water streams from our eyelids. The sound of wailing is heard from Zion. How ruined we are. How great is our shame. We must leave our land because our houses are in ruins. Now, you women, hear the word of the Lord. Open your ears to the words of his mouth. Teach your daughters how to will. Teach one another a lament. Death has climbed in through our windows and has entered our fortresses. It has removed the children from the streets and the young men from the public squares. Say, this is what the Lord declares. Dead bodies will lie like dung on the open field, like cut grain behind the reaper, with no one to gather them. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom or the strong boast of their strength or the rich boast of their riches. But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord, who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will punish all who are circumcised only in the flesh, Egypt, Judah, Edom, Ammon, Moab and all will live in the wilderness in distant places for all these nations are really uncircumcised and even the whole house of israel is uncircumcised in heart jeremiah 10 1 to 25 god and idols hear what the lord says to you people of israel this is what the lord says do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the heavens though the nations are terrified by them for the practices of the peoples are worthless they cut a tree out of the forest and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel 
They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nail so it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in Kokumba field, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot talk or walk. Do not fear them. They can do no harm, nor can they do any good. No one is like you, Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. Who should not fear you, King of the nations? This is your due. Among all the wise leaders of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is no one like you. They are all senseless and foolish. They are taught by worthless wooden idols. Hamad silver is brought from Tarshish and gold from Ufaz. What the craftsman and goldsmith have made is then dressed in blue and purple, all made by skilled workers. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God. The eternal king, when he is angry, the earth trembles. The nations cannot endure his wrath. Tell them this. These gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. But God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he thunders, the waters in the heavens roar. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. Everyone is senseless and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is shamed by his idols. The images he makes are a fraud. They have no breath in them. They are worthless, the objects of mockery. When their judgment comes, they will perish. He who is the portion of Jacob is not like this, for he is the maker of all things, including Israel. The people of his inheritance, the Lord Almighty, is his name. Coming destruction. Gather up your belongings to leave the land. You will live under siege. For this is what the Lord says. At this time, I will hurl out those who live in this land. I will bring distress on them so that they may be captured. Woe to me because of my injury. My wound is incurable. Yet, I said to myself, this is my sickness and I must endure it. My tent is destroyed. All its ropes are snapped. My children are gone from me and are no more. No one is left now to pitch my tent or to set up my shelter. The shepherds are senseless and do not inquire of the Lord, so they do not prosper and all their flock is scattered. Listen, the report is coming. A great commotion from the land of the north. It will make the towns of Judah desolate, a haunt of jackals. Jeremiah's prayer. Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. Discipline me, Lord, but only in due measure, not in your anger, or you will reduce me to nothing. Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the peoples who do not call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob, they have devoured him completely and destroyed him, his homeland. Jeremiah 11, 1-17 The covenant is broken. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Listen to the terms of this covenant and tell them to the people of Judah. <coughs> Excuse me. And to those who live in Jerusalem. Tell them that this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Curse is the one who does not obey the terms of this covenant. The terms I commanded your ancestors when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the iron smelting furnace, I said, Obey me, and do everything I command you, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. Then, I will fulfill the oath I swore to your ancestors, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, the land you possess today. I answered, Amen, Lord. The Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Listen to the terms of this covenant and follow them. From the time I brought your ancestors up from Egypt until today, I warned them again and again, saying, Obey me. But they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubbornness of their evil hearts. So, I brought on them all the curses 
of the covenant I had commanded them to follow, but they did not keep. Then the Lord said to me, There is a conspiracy among the people of Judah and those who live in Jerusalem. They have returned to the sins of their ancestors, who refused to listen to my words. They have followed other gods to serve them. Both Israel and Judah have broken the covenant I made with their ancestors. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, I will bring on them a disaster they cannot escape. Although they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. The towns of Judah and the people of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods to whom they burn incense, but they will not help them at all when disaster strikes. You, Judah, have as many gods as you have towns, and the altars you have set up to burn incense to that shameful god Baal are as many as the streets of Jerusalem. Do not pray for these people or offer any plea or petition for them, because I will not listen when they call to me in the time of their distress. What is my beloved doing in my temple as she, with many others, works out her evil schemes? Can consecrated meat avert your punishment? When you engage in your wickedness, then you rejoice. The Lord called you a thriving olive, o olive tree, with fruit beautiful in form. But with the roar of a mighty storm, he will set it on fire and its branches will be broken. The Lord Almighty who planted you has decreed disaster for you because the people of both Israel and Judah have done evil and aroused my anger by burning incense to Baal. New Testament NIV Version Colossians 1 24-29 Paul's Labor for the Church Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. He's the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Colossians 2, 1 to 5. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit, and I delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 117, verse 1 to 2. Praise the Lord, all you nations, extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Lessons learned from Jeremiah 9, 17-26. Sorrow over sin. God calls for a lamentation, highlighting the deep sorrow that should accompany national and personal sin. This teaches us the importance of repentance and genuine sorrow over wrongdoing. Circumcision of the heart. God emphasizes that true righteousness is not about outward rituals but about having a heart that is devoted to Him. We must focus on inward purity and transformation. Lessons learned from Jeremiah 10. Futility of idolatry. 
This passage contrasts the living God with lifeless idols, showing how futile it is to trust in man-made gods. We are reminded to place our trust in the one true God who created the heavens and the earth. God's Sovereignty The sovereignty of God over all nations is affirmed, reminding us that He is in control of everything. We should not fear worldly powers but trust in God's supreme authority. Lessons learned from Jeremiah 11, 1 to 17. Obedience to God's covenant. God reminds Israel of the covenant He made with their ancestors and how they failed to keep it. This teaches the importance of obedience to God's word and the consequences of rebellion. God's justice. The passage shows that God's patience has limits when his people persist in sin. It serves as a warning to turn back to him while there is still time knowing that disobedience leads to judgment. Lessons learned from Colossians 1 24 to 29. Joy in suffering for Christ. Paul rejoices in his sufferings because they are for the sake of the church. This teaches us that suffering for the sake of Christ can have a divine purpose and should be endured with joy, knowing it contributes to God's plan. Christ in us the hope of glory. The mystery of the gospel is revealed. Christ lives in us. This truth reminds us that our ultimate hope and glory come from Christ dwelling in us, empowering us to live godly lives. Lessons learned from Colossians 2, 1-5 Unity in Love Paul emphasizes the importance of believers being knit together in love, showing that love and unity are foundational in the body of Christ. The treasure of wisdom in Christ All wisdom and knowledge are found in Christ. We are encouraged to seek him as our source of understanding and to be vigilant against deceptive philosophies or teachings that are contrary to the gospel. Lessons learned from Psalm 117 verse 1 to 2. Universal Praise This short but powerful psalm calls all nations and peoples to praise God for his steadfast love and faithfulness. It reminds us that God's love extends to all humanity and we are to join in worship and gratitude for his mercy. God's Enduring Faithfulness The psalm emphasizes God's faithfulness that lasts forever, reassuring us that we can always trust in his promises and love, no matter what circumstances we face. Faith Declarations from Jeremiah 9, 17-26 Jeremiah 10 and Jeremiah 11, 1 to 17. I declare that I will mourn over sin and seek genuine repentance before the Lord. My heart is circumcised before God and I seek inward transformation over outward rituals. I confess that my trust is in God, not in worldly wisdom or customs. I strive to know Him deeply and I walk in humility for he delights in those who understand and know him. I declare that there is no God like you, Lord. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, and I reject any form of idolatry in my life. I confess that you alone are sovereign, and my trust is in you, not in the things of this world. I will honor and worship you, knowing that you hold all power and authority. I declare that I am committed to keeping the covenant of God, walking in obedience to his word. I confess that I will not turn to false gods or disobey the commands of the Lord. I trust in his justice and mercy, knowing that he rewards obedience and disciplines rebellion. Faith declarations from Colossians 1, 24-29 and Colossians 2, 1-5. I declare that I rejoice in my sufferings for Christ, knowing that through them I am fulfilling my calling to serve his body, the church. I confess that Christ lives in me and he is my hope of glory. I will proclaim him and I strive to present others mature in him. 
relying on his power working in me. I declare that my heart is encouraged and knit together with other believers in love. I seek the full riches of complete understanding in Christ. I confess that in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I will not be deceived by any false teachings, but I will stand firm in the truth of the gospel. Faith declarations from Psalm 117 verse 1 to 2. I declare that I will praise the Lord for his steadfast love and faithfulness. I join with all nations in exalting his name for his love endures forever. I confess that God's faithfulness toward me is unshakable and I will continue to trust him with all my heart giving him glory in all things. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are super excited to welcome you into God's family. Please kindly go ahead right now, send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please share this broadcast with your friends, family, and loved ones. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles every day. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.